Um, next up is Miguel Gonzalez Sanchez, uh, also known as Bitbrain. Wait, I'll, I'll wait a second for the people to sit down. But yeah, also known as Bitbrain. He's a YouTuber, uh, you may know him from there, uh, that makes a lot of useful tutorials on Godot 3 and Godot 4. And he's here today to talk about the importance of a content pipeline in game development and especially how to use Godot add-ons to help uh, in create or just import, sorry, to help create such a content pipeline with Godot. Let's welcome him to the stage. <laughs> hello, hello. So this talk will start about the basics of add-ons, and then eventually we will delve into more um, into the pitfalls of using add-ons. So it looks very um, bright at the beginning, but uh, uh, I'm, I created a very um, uh, honest talk at the end. Uh, so watch out for that. So who I am? I I am Miguel or Bitbrain. Um, it's quite confusing to some because I have a very Spanish name, but I'm German, and I live in the UK. So I'm uh, working on a Dwarven RPG. Um, if you want to learn about it, check out my YouTube channel. And uh, I'm the maintainer of the Pandora and Behave add-ons, uh, both for Godot 4, and P uh, Behave is for Godot 3 as well. And uh, why am I here? Well, because I love Godot. It's uh, my favorite game engine. And um, if you're curious and you want to have a little spoiler, you can access the slides on this link, um, yeah, in case you're curious. So let's talk about Godot's design philosophy before we start about add-ons. So generally in Godot, any big feature needs to be, um, needs to benefit most of the users first. So often you ask yourself, oh, why doesn't Godot have this particular feature that I really need? And probably the answer is because probably most users don't need it. Um, so I would say most features Godot nowadays has are actually really useful to a lot of people. But this creates a problem because then these people who have very specific problems, should they go so somewhere else? Should they write their own thing? And this is where Godot add-ons come into play. Um, before I talk about Godot add-ons specifically, I want to clear up some fl uh, terminology. Because um, often people use the word add-on and plugin or module interchangeably, but there is a fine difference. So an add-on is basically any third-party code or assets, really, uh, including the plugins. And then a plugin is specifically a Godot editor plugin. Um, and this is why it's called the add-ons folder, but you have a plugin config, so this might be confusing to some, but there's a reason behind it. Also, uh, the concept of extensions brought in, uh, by Godot 4, which is the, um, which, which is the successor to GD Native. Uh, and there are modules, which are basically compiled with the Godot core. So a plugin looks like this. This is a, a snippet from the Dialogic plugin config. Um, and yeah, it looks like this. You have a config file, and Godot will know how to um, how to read this, and then it loads the plugin for you. And you have a little script section there where you um, define a GD script, um, and then Godot uses this as an entry point. For GD extensions, it looks similar. Um, however, GD extensions are not an alternative to plugins, but they basically work in combination. Um, so the GD extension basically is just a uh, interface to native GD co uh, to native C++ code, and then you can access that via the plugin code. So you can you can often see GD extensions who have both GD extension and the plugin config. So let's talk about the add-on ecosystem. Question to anyone here in the room: Who here uses add-ons? All hands almost go up. Okay, uh, who here builds add-ons? Yeah, that's like thirty percent, forty percent, roughly. Yeah, good, good. Um, there are a lot of add-ons, uh, especially now with the inception of Godot 4. Um, sorry to anyone whose add-on I haven't included here. Uh, yeah, there are some amazing add-ons. Uh, yeah, like Dialogic. Lots of people uh, know this. Um, originally built by Emilio. Um, 
there's a good old steam um, who, um, that we saw yesterday in the talk. Um, yeah, there's also Phantom Camera. Um, it's basically like Cinema Machine from Unity, but uh, basically for Godot. Um, yeah, and there are a lot of add-ons. The problem is for especially new people who come to Godot, it can be quite overwhelming because there are so many add-ons, and it's very difficult to even understand, okay, when should I use an add-on? Should I just download all the add-ons into my game and just use them all, or should I use no add-on? What is like the downside? So and this actually... Um, made me think to make this talk because I had a conversation on Twitter a while ago where I was um, posting about a new add-on and then someone said, hey, but do you actually need an add-on for this? And it actually made me, made me think a lot about it. And uh, yeah, this is what this talk uh, will also talk about. So uh, let's chat a bit about some type of add-ons. Um, so there are workflow add-ons and they mostly just save time. Um, yesterday we saw an amazing talk about uh, plugins already and we, we saw how they can accelerate the workflow. Um, one example is, for example, Sprite. So I use Sprite for my game and you can see every black or white dot there is a, a keyframe or like a frame. And currently, if I want to use this in Godot, I need to export this into a sprite sheet and then manually in the animation player, one by one, set all the keyframes. And obviously, you don't want to do that, right? So instead, there is an amazing add-on called Godot Sprite Wizard. And it generates animation players for you. And um, yeah, you can basically use your uh, Sprite animations. Another big part of uh, add-ons I find very appealing is unit testing. Um, I don't know who here has heard of unit testing before. Um, yeah. Yeah, good, good. Uh, it's very useful and I can just recommend it. There are a couple of um, great unit testing add-ons. I think there are even more, but these were the main ones I found. Um, I'm personally using the GD Unit 4 one by Mike Schulze. Shout out to Mike um, if you are online in the audience. Um, so this is how a unit test looks like. I use this in one of my add-ons. Um, and the question is, okay, why do I need unit testing, right? Like. I know what my code does. Why, why do I need to test that? Um, the thing is you actually code for two people. Uh, you code for yourself and the future you. So in, in, in a year from now, will you still understand all the different assumptions you made a year ago, right? Um, and this is where um, unit tests really shine. But the beauty of uh, Godot and, um, and these add-ons is you can not run them locally, but also you can run them in a pipeline or on GitHub. So what I do for my add-ons is I use a GitHub action, um, and that GitHub action uh, then runs it automat automatically on every commit. And this is very useful for add-on developers. So if you're building an add-on, um, the question is, how do you know that any PR you merge will not break? You know, Because how do you know? Uh, you would need to like download the PR code and test various scenarios manu manually, um, or you just merge it and hope nobody complains. Um, but ideally, you want to ensure that uh, no regression sneaks in. And this is where these unit tests uh, add-ons are extremely helpful. Um, yeah, and the next type is integrations. Um, yeah, I contributed to the FMOD GD extension by Utopia Rise. Um, there's also an amazing FMOD GD extension by um, Alessandro. Um, and FMOD, I use that in my game um, for as an alternative sound engine. And for people who are curious, um, for example, Celeste, the game Celeste, it's using also FMOD. And uh, there is a great Twitch stream by one of the audio engineers of, of Celeste who uh, makes an introduction to FMOD. And uh, yeah, you can Google it, it's quite easy to find. Um, and yeah, FMOD, um, it's, it's great. Um, yeah, also Godot. Yolt or Jolt, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, ju mm -hmm. No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically an alternative physics engine to the one Godot has. Uh, Godot's physics engine has uh, a couple of issues um, in host physics engine, and um, Godot um, Jolt solves some of these issues, but it has a different um, design principle under the hood. Um, but the great thing about Jolt is that it's a drop-in replacement, so you can 
still use your character body 3D, you can still use your, your uh, collisions and everything, uh, it, it will just work. Uh, but there are some limitations, but also some advantages. Uh, and there are other types of add-ons, uh, so editor extensions, uh, language bindings, so for example, there you can write games in Rust if you want to. Uh, you can uh, yeah, build even games in C++ um, if you really want to. Uh, so uh, yeah, there are also templates, so for example, Kenny um, did some amazing starter templates and like demo projects for Godot. Um, and also, there are game jam templates. So if you are starting out on a game jam and you want to save some time, uh, make sure to read the game jam rules, but many game jams actually allow you to start off with a template where you have like menus and like a character you can move around. Uh, and this can save you a lot of time. Uh, yeah, shaders, custom notes, themes, yeah. Um, and yeah, you can find uh, the add-ons uh, all over the internet. Uh, these are my favorite sources, personally. I really like um, the GitHub search because you can find some very obscure add-ons that have zero stars, but uh, they do amazing things and they can save you a lot of time. Um, yeah, I let people photograph this. But again, the slides will be online as well. Um, so, uh, is there an add-on for that? So, there are various things when you do games, right? And I try to assemble these, these different things in the terms of complexity. So. The SML XL is basically the complexity of a task, right? And so, let's say, for example, you want to uh, fix the timing of a, so of, a, of a sound. Do you need an add-on for this, right? You probably just use uh, a tool to like cut the sound manually, and that's it, right? But for example, what if you actually want to integrate with FMOD? Like, how do you even start? You know, even especially if you have no idea about uh, C++, um, or you want to have procedural level generation. Let's say. You, you have no idea about maths or about procgen, but you really want to have a procgen game. Um, and this is where procedure, uh, where um, add-ons can really shine because they allow you to, um, to fill these gaps, right? Um, so, but there is no silver bullet. Um, so the big problem with add-ons is that they become outdated eventually. Because Godot is changing all the time, and you cannot stop it, you cannot prevent it. It will always there was there will always be a newer Godot version, and many Godot versions make actually add-ons incompatible. Um, especially sometimes GD script contract might change, um, control nodes might change. Uh, add-ons can have bugs, so how do you know that an add-on actually does what's on the tin? Um, you can also have add-ons that have dis different design goals in terms of how they are built. So. Let's say you have a code base and you want to do things a certain way, for example, event-based, but then the add-on does things uh, against the grain and then it's very difficult to incorporate that, right? Uh, yeah, and add-ons can break your game. Um, and the problem is that, um, yeah, it's very hard to debug add-ons that you don't know how they work um, internally. So, yeah, there's this uh, quote, uh, yeah, you need to be twice as smart as the person who wrote the code in order to debug it, yeah. Um, so the solution to this, obviously, is DIY, right? Just build it yourself. Uh, who needs add-ons? Um, because, well, you, you don't have any external dependencies. Uh, everything is consistent according to your own standards. Um, any bug can be backtraced back to you um, or Godot. Um, and uh, you really don't need to study docs, right? Uh, you can just uh, write it. Uh, but the problem is you need to know how to write it. So. If you want a dialogue system, you need to know how to build a dialogue system. If you want, I don't know, a procedural generation system, you need to learn and know how to do that, right? Even if you just want to build a game. Um, and this can be especially difficult during game jams. So there are a couple of um, things to look out for when to probably use an add-on. So if you don't want to build it yourself, uh, if you have no time to build it yourself, you, sometimes you just want to build a small game, you don't really want to think about technical problems. Uh, maybe you want to even build it, build it yourself, but you want to first understand what solutions are out there already. So it's actually a great way to like check out an add-on. And uh, yeah, uh, and if you want to get a head start, for example, doing game jams. So there are a couple of things that I would consider to, to be a good add-on. Um, I, I, I don't say perfect add-on, because th there is not really the perfect add-on. 
But I think these are like some of the things where any add-on developer um, or also any add-on user can look out for because it can help you on the long run. Because when you look at an add-on, it can be very useful at first. You, you think, oh, this is useful, I'm going to use it. But then you need to also maintain it, right? You need to, make, you need to consider, okay, what in a year from now when Godot has three new versions, can I still use this add-on, right? So uh, a good add-on needs to be useful, it needs to be well-documented, or it should be, uh, not needs to be, should be well-documented. Uh, so there should be some documentation. Um, I think it also should be well-presented. Um, it helps a lot to like grasp, okay, what is this add-on ab uh, about? Um, it should be tested. So if an add-on doesn't have any unit tests, you know that if any change is made, they ne these changes need to be manually tested. And then the question is, how does the add-on maintainer know that it doesn't break anything, right? And if the add-on add -on maintainer doesn't know, uh, that's a problem, right? And then it might be even better to you write your own thing. Um, uh, I also think a good add-on should be maintained or archived. Um, what I mean by that is often um, people just build an add-on and upload it and then forget about it. Um, but I think it's best if, if you intend to not intentionally maintain the add-on to either archive the repository or have like a disclaimer to say this add-on is not maintained so people who really want to maintain it can then fork it. Um, otherwise, it creates the problem where I see this on a lot of repositories where people create like issues and they say like, is this add-on still maintained? Is this still maintained? And this actually happens all over open source. And um, also I think a good add-on should be compatible. So at least it should either support all the Godot versions or it should um, mention which Godot versions it does and does not support. Because uh, sometimes you want to use an add-on and then it doesn't work and then you don't know why. Um, and a quick, um, quick tips on README. So if you are an add-on developer, uh, yeah, adding like a logo, some animations and GIFs, um, maybe some uh, instructions how to install, uh, yeah, compa compa compatibility matrix, how to contribute guide, and yeah, um, a wiki, for example. Um, there's a great tool called Doxify that you can use to generate wikis, and I use that for my add-ons. And uh, there are also a couple of uh, very interesting proposals so, um, that are specific to add-on development. So one thing, for example, is global add-ons. Sometimes you have certain add-ons that you always need, but what you currently have to do, you ha always have to install it in every single game project. And there's a proposal to um, have this globally. So regardless of the project you are in, it auto-loads. Um, also a, a add-on subsystem where you can where add-ons can have add-ons, so you can have add-ons that um, extend uh, and, and have their own little add-on system. Um, and there's also the proposal for a extension development plugin. So currently debugging or building GD extensions is actually outside of the Godot editor. It's actually a separate experience, which is um, not ideal. So the goal is to to combine the experience into a single editor that even GD extensions at some point could be built inside the Godot editor. Um, but uh, yeah, it's still a long way ahead. Any questions? First off, thank you very much for your talk. And if... <laughs> <laughs> And if there are any questions, please raise your hand, and I'll be there shortly. Hello. Um, so given your knowledge of a lot of add-ons that are available, are there any areas of game development that you feel there isn't as many add-ons that could be supplied to, whether it's, say, like audio or, or uh, a particular area? I think um, audio for sure, because the reason why I'm using uh, FMOD is there are not really other, um, there are other audio add-ons, but just a few ones um, and not hundreds or dozens. So audio for sure. Um, I think also uh, generally like in editor plugins that make, that change the Godot editor itself, because uh, p maybe some people are not aware but the Godot editor is just a Godot game running in the Godot engine. So you're actually building a game with a game. So, and you can customize it with add-ons. And I, I hope that in future I see more add-ons that actually try to manipulate the Godot editor 
Um, yeah. Um, thanks for the nice talk um, and also for the nice add-ins. I really like them and also your YouTube videos. They're pretty helpful, especially since I also do some tool development. Um, I have a question. You you are working on a game and also on tools. How do you manage to like not like get lost in the like tool development because it it is never done, kinda, in my opinion. So yeah. So the reason why I'm building tools, right, is to to save time, because ideally I want to be done with my game earlier than like later, right? So this is why I, b I built the add-ons I've built. Um, that being said, I think my approach usually is that I only add the features that I actually currently need for the game, and or even the new, new, new near future of the game, and I um, have a huge backlog of ideas but what I usually do, I put them as issues on, on GitHub, but I don't really touch them because I want to work on my game, right? So that's usually my approach, to only work on the stuff personally that I really need. And if anybody else needs something, they can jump onto the issues and implement them. Or when, I, when I'm bored one weekend, I might do it. But that rarely happens. Okay, any more questions on this side? Oh, on the other side, okay. What are your uh, top three add-ons? Like when you start a new project, what's uh, what are the three add-ons you you install before you do anything else? I think it depends on the game. Like during a game jam, for example, um, I think Sprite Wizard is a must for pixel art games because it just saves so much time and you don't have to worry about animating. Um, it's a good question. I think for, for bigger games, I think something like GD, GD Shell, but there are other um, plugins like this, basically debug shells where you can write your own commands, custom commands to debug stuff. Uh, for example, I use this to spawn items, to set the speed of the, um, the in-game world, um, to move the player around and, and teleport um, or load other levels. So you can use that as well. And I don't know, may maybe for people who use tiles, um, that's a must-have. But I think uh, like some of the dialogue uh, add-ons. So there's Dialogic, there's Dialogue Manager. There are various dialogue add-ons, and especially f during game jams, when you want to have dialogue in your game, it just works, and you don't have to even think about it. Yeah. Tim, any questions remaining? On the other side, again. <laughs> So you've talked about unit testing, and I wanted to ask whether you just use unit testing for your add-ons, or do you also use them for your games? That's a good question. I actually plan to do a talk on this, uh, but then I did this talk, uh, because I don't, I'm not sure yet. The, the problem is I'm currently in a uh, prototyping phase, so things can change very quickly. Uh, especially game gameplay can just change overnight if I have an idea. When I create unit tests, it kind of pulls me away from wanting to make changes because I th then I think about, um, oh, now I need to also change the tests, so I better not try out this idea. So currently I'm not, I'm not really using unit tests for my game, but I thought about it, um, especially for like game mechanics where now those will never change. They will be always in the game. And for those, I could add tests. Um, yeah. Okay, with that, can you give us a quick shout out to your YouTube channel? Tell us what you're doing. Yes, so uh, my YouTube handle is BitBrainDev. Uh, I tried to use BitBrain, but YouTube didn't let me for some reason. I don't know. So it's, it's BitBrainDev, and I'm uh, creating yeah, devlogs on my pixel art RPG. I'm making Godot videos currently for Godot 4, uh, and I'm planning currently a pixel art series. It's in development. Uh, yeah, I I want to release multiple videos at once for that because it's it's a sequence. Um, so so stay tuned for that. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. And thank you for being here. Thanks.